Hello, and welcome to the Vanessa Waller Show, where we always give God thanks. Hello, and welcome to One on One with Vanessa. Yes, live here in Los Angeles, California, the Vanessa Waller Show, a place where we always give God thanks. Can you believe we are already in 2009, the last day of the year, December 31st, and I'm in Los Angeles. I will be getting my praise on tonight. Uh Uh-huh, I will be praising the Lord at the City of Refuge Church in Gardena, California with Bishop Noel Jones. And today my special guest is the man of God himself, Bishop Jones. He is here, he's gonna be talking to you guys, he's gonna be talking about what he's perceiving, what the Holy Spirit is gonna speak to the church in the year 2009. And we get to know him a little bit more intimately right here on this show. And so when we come back, you will be able to meet the man yourself. Uh Uh-huh, right here at the Vanessa Wallace Show. Be back in a moment with Dr. Bishop Noel Jones. Welcome back, everybody. Everybody, hey, this is One on One with Vanessa, and like I promised you, I have the man himself sitting right next to me to my left. Hello, Bishop Jones. How are you? Vanessa, I'm doing well. Great. I am so excited, first of all, to be here in Los Angeles with you. I'm excited to be at your church on tonight because I just was telling my viewers I'm so ready to get my praise on, and it's just an honor. First, I just have to say all this stuff before we go into my questions. Just to watch you on TV. I've seen you on TV for years. Um, I've seen how you deliver God's word, and I just, I've just been so touched by what God has done for you, and, and it's just a revelation that just speaks out of your mouth. And I know that not just me, but my viewers and other people who know you are just touched, just like me. So when you when you hear that, does it make you kind of like it's a humble thing, or does it make you like, wow, I can't believe someone well, is saying hum- that about me? It's always a humbling thing because yes. one of the most difficult things is to continually have information mm-hmm. and inspiration and uh, instruction. So it's a, it's a humbling thing. It's, it's wow. really, it's really mm-hmm. God doing it. You know, I remember, I want to say about maybe 10 years ago, um, that I really start paying attention to Christian television. Like I, I, like I do watch TV, you guys, but not a whole lot of Christian TV. And I saw you at um, one of Bishop Jake's um, um, like little segments on television. And I saw you and I heard your voice and I thought, that, is he an American? Who is, where is he from? So yeah. exactly, where are you from? Well, I grew up in Jamaica. I grew up in okay. uh, Spanish Town, Jamaica. Okay. I went to high school in Jamaica. In fact, uh, I was on the track team and I did a lot of things, mm-hmm. played soccer, cricket, all of the things. Okay, now what is cricket? Cricket's a British game pretty much, or it's European. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's a sort of offshoot baseball kind of thing, except you have wickets and the guy throws the ball to hit the wicket and you bat. Oh, wow, the okay. You're hitting the wicket, if you hit the wicket, you're out. Mm-hmm. And then you run between the, 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 the wickets. Wow. And if you bat the ball over a certain distance, it's six runs. If you hit it along the ground, it's four runs. It's and you just, played that? I played cricket, I played uh-huh. football, soccer. So what did you like best? Which uh, sport did just, you like best? Uh, uh, track really was my thing. Okay, what did you Because you know, uh, I told you my husband I mean, tracks. So. At 15, I did 21 feet 7 inches. Are you at 15? Jump. At 15. Wow. And believe it or not, my mother was high jump champion. Really? I was long jump champion. Uh, my son has the high jump and the hop, step, and jump record at Claremont College. Okay. And my grandson can stand right here <laughs> and explode to 36 inches. So you guys got some. Yeah, it's genetic. Right. Well, so what do you, real quick, what do, this is totally off the subject, but what do you feel about the, uh, uh, the, the 100 meter, the world champion, the young dude from Oh, that? you mean uh, the uh, other Jamaican? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you uh, feel Bolt? about it? Yeah, Bolt, yeah. Uh, Bolt is in, uh, a very interesting kind of a guy. And, mm-hmm. uh, extraordinarily gifted. Right. And it was, was uh, I, I talked to Lennox Lewis the other day. He was on his way to Jamaica. And he called me from Miami mm-hmm. and he said he's going to do some uh, special things and here's what he's saying he's saying the kids are so crazy and crime is so horrendous in the mm. streets uh, he said if we have the the top runner mm-hmm. uh, in male the top runner female in the world right uh, we have the top runners for the relays mm. he says why in the world can't we have the top boxers in the world and he's going to introduce with some help from me the whole boxing thing on the streets in Jamaica really? to get the kids off the street. Well, you know, Jamaica, when I was watching the Olympics and, and just do a whole uh, bolt, 
that whole, I mean, the girls and the guys, they were just sweeping. They were cleaning up. Usually, America usually take the gold and everything. Yeah. But, man, Jamaica just... Man, yeah, it's a new breed. New breed, I know. Well, look, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, I know my viewers want to know what's going on with Bishop Noel Jones, with the church, and with you. And if you don't mind, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about it, okay? Good. All right, we'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to the Vanessa Wallace Show. We left off talking about track and field and all that wonderful stuff in Jamaica. So let's get down to the nitty gritty, okay? I want to know, first of all, Bishop, Dr. Noel Jones, that what do you believe God is speaking to the church in this new year that we're about to embark in? Well, I'm, I'm a little different than, than believing that there's going to be any, any new message because of okay. a chronological change. Okay, what do you I'm mean by that? Chron chronology uh, from Kronos... Uh, chronograph, time just passes. Okay. And we go from one year into another year, and it really doesn't change anything unless it changes, unless you change your mind. Mm. Because what we're looking for now is not just a chronos, what we're looking for is a kairos. That's really what you're asking. Okay, that's what and, I'm asking. Uh, and you're, you're talking about a season. Exactly. And uh, the, the, because the year changes from uh, 2009 to 2010, mm -hmm. that doesn't necessarily, necessarily change your season. Because hmm. your kairos is going to be quite dependent on the way okay. you think, okay, on you the machinations of your mind, mm -hmm. on what you have gained in terms of lessons, on how you will improve yourself. So the individual can change their season okay. at any time. So how does that happen? Well, that happens by someone just being uh, renewed, mm -hmm. transform, transformed by the renewing of their minds. Mm -hmm. So once you're transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you can move into whatever mm -hmm. season God has ordained for you. Right. So and you think that's a critical piece. So do you think a lot of people stay in bondage or stay where they're, where they're at because they don't have a paradigm shift? That their mind isn't changed. Exactly, exactly. That, and, 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 and people are expecting something to happen externally mm -hmm. that needs to happen right. internally. It's an external situation where the chronograph is moving, the clock is ticking, mm -hmm. and you can sit there and wait until the next year before you decide to change your oh. life, or yeah. you can decide right now. And, uh, and, and that, that's the critical piece. So what God is saying in 2010, mm. he has already said in, in 2009, 2009. In, 2008. in 2008, <laughs> in 2007, and he's already given us the instruction. Great. So how, how do you feel about this? Now, there's churches in the community, um, not mega churches like yours, that um, want, they want to be more productive, right, in their community, but they don't have the funds or they don't have the talent or the, the people there. What do you say to people like that? You know, you have different um, churches like if we only had this if we had that we, we could do this and we can do that so what do you feel about that well I think that everybody has to function on whatever level they can mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the the story of the talents right and one had one one had That's two it. one five exactly uh, each uh, several according to their ability, ability. And so everybody's expected to operate within the parameters of their ability, not above, mm -hmm. not below, but according to sure. their ability. And mm -hmm. that's what God is looking for. I think that if people are faithful over executing what they have that. within yes. their space, then that becomes the prerequisite for the next level, level. move. And things will be provided. You mm -hmm. see, Bye. you've got to distinguish between ambition and vision. Ambition and vision. You've got to make a distinguish. Okay, you got to distinguish between the two. You see, ambition is what you desire to do. Okay. Vision is what God desires for you to do. Mm. Now, He may or may not give you what it takes to support your ambition, okay. but He certainly will give you what it takes to support your vision. But can your ambition become a part of that vision? Well, it's interesting that God uses ambition too, as well as vision. Mm -hmm. But ambition has more self-involved than Correct. vision. See, what vision mm -hmm. does is vision is more concerned about serving. Okay, got it. Blessing. Yes. Ambition is more concerned about self. About self aggrandizing. Oh, yeah, we don't, we don't need that. Okay. And so there's a distinct yeah. difference between ambition and vision. Well, I'm glad you made that clear, Bishop. You know, I know you're an international preacher and you go all over the country and preach. What is the, do you see that faith? operates differently in those who live outside of the U U.S. Talk I'm talking about like miracles, um, especially over in Africa. I know you go to Africa a lot well, here in, in America. On, all I hear that a lot. On what miracle you're, you're looking for. Like healings and things uh, healing, along that line. Healings take place in, in Africa, but they take place right here in America right. too. 
uh, the, 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 the first question, or the original question, was mm -hmm. the difference in faith. Exactly. Uh, I think that in America, faith is generally associated with capitalistic gains. Really? And not salvation. Mm. That's, that's how that? we have promoted it. I mean, that's what we have done. We have preached Americanism for yeah. the gospel. And the application of faith has to be different, say, in Somalia than in America. Mm. Because people are suffering and living on a level that is almost abject poverty. Correct. So the question now is, how does their faith right. occupy them with worshiping and yes. serving God and living for God when they have nothing financial right. to in stand on? Mm -hmm. Whereas our faith always surrounds itself right. with the expectation Patient. of mm -hmm. gain. Okay. And when we lose things financially, our tendency is not to be as spiritual and be more questioning of God because we don't anticipate hardship in an American environment if you believe and trust in God. So faith in the application is purer. Okay, it's pure, okay. Outside okay. of our country than it is in our country because that faith is faith for salvation. Right. That faith is not what I have kind of faith, mm -hmm. but who I am. But you know, that's what I always wonder. You know, you see people in church. I, I was raised in church. I was raised in um, the Church of God in Christ and then went to an independent holiness church. And you have people who have little, then you have those who have much. And then we always sometimes deal with our churches with poverty and, and if we had this or had that. But when you're talking about people who don't have anything, like like absolutely nothing over there in Africa and their faith is in God is so much bigger and grander than what we think is poverty. So what we consider poor or broke or destitute is not really poor, broke, and destitute, correct? Well, listen, if you have one car, if you have a car, period, mm -hmm. you are better off than 75% of the world. If you have one car, if you have two cars, now you're into 90% of the world. Wow. Okay, so if you have covering over your head, if you have not living in a shanty, have wonderful clothes and shoes, uh, you're living better than most, most of the world, period. Period. But what we have is that we have got caught up in the get rich Jesus and the, you yeah. know, the right now Jesus, but they have to live for eternity mm. because they're not going to have much hair and everybody is not going to be rich. You know, I, we're going to end on that note. When we come back, we're going to elaborate more on that, okay? We're going to take a break. We have more with Dr. Noah Jones. Be back in a moment.